Hi everyone, it's time for Sunday School. It's so good to be with you this morning. And as we're going on into um, more of the books of the Bible, we're going to be in the book of Judges today. But we have a new memory verse. Remember last time, for about four weeks, we've had Joshua 1 through 8. Never stop reading this book of the law. Day and night, you must think about what it says. Make sure you do everything in, written in it. Then things will go well with you, and you will have great success. So we've been working on that one for a while. I still have to read it. That's okay. This new memory verse is from Ruth chapter 1, verse, verse 16, um, B. And it says, where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. You, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. I know this one a little better because the first part of it, where you go, I'll go, and where you stay, I'll stay, is in one of my um, songs that I love, a Christian contemporary song by Chris Tomlin called um, I Will Follow. I almost forgot the name of the song. And the first part of it says, where you go, I'll go, where you stay, I'll stay. And it's just a statement about when God calls us, we're going to do what he says to do. And that's really kind of what I'm going to talk to you about today, that God can use us when we obey him. And we know that obeying him is, is kind of hard sometimes, but we can learn to do great things when we choose to obey God. <clears throat> so we're going to be in Judges chapter 6, verses 7 through 24 today. And this is a story about a man named Gideon. Let me read this to you first. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord against the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet to them. He said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you out of Egypt, the land of slavery. I saved you from the Egyptians and all those who were against you. I forced the Canaanites out of their land and gave it to you. Then I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Live in the land of the Amorites, but do not worship their gods. But you did not obey me. The angel of the Lord came down and sat down under the oak tree at Ophrah that belonged to Joash, one of the Ab Abizarite people. Gideon, Joash's son, was separating some wheat from the chaff in a wine press to keep the wheat from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Then Gideon said, Sir, if the Lord is with us, why are we having so much trouble? Where are the miracles our ancestors told us he did when the Lord brought them out of Egypt? But now he has left us and has handed us over to the Midianites. The Lord turned to Gideon and said, Go with your strength and save Israel from the Midianites. I am the one who is sending you. But Gideon answered, Lord, how can I save Israel? My family group is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least important member of my family. The Lord answered him, I will be with you. It will seem as if the Midianites you are fighting are only one man. Then Gideon said to the Lord, If you are pleased with me, give me proof that it is really you talking to me. Please wait here until I come back to you. Let me bring my offering and set it in front of you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. So Gideon went in and cooked a young goat, and with twenty quarts of flour, made bread without yeast. Then he put the meat into a basket and the broth into a pot. He brought them out and gave them to the angel under the oak tree. The angel of God said to Gideon, Put the meat and the bread without yeast on that rock over there. Then pour the broth on them. And Gideon did as he was told. The angel of the Lord touched the meat and the bread with the end of the stick that was in his hand. Then fire jumped up from the rock and completely burned up the meat and the bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared. Then Gideon understood he had been talking to the angel of the Lord. So Gideon cried out, Lord God, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to Gideon, calm down, don't be afraid, you will not die. So Gideon built an altar there to worship the Lord and named it, The Lord is Peace. It still stands at Ophrah, where the 
Abriza writes live. I can't say that last word very well. That's kind of a neat story. You know, I am sure that you probably all have a favorite superhero. I have a favorite. I'm going to show you all some symbols, and I want you to think about which superhero these belong to. I'm sure you know what they are, and uh, I'm sure you can figure out what special abilities they have. I wish we were together so that we could do this together. Here's the first one. That's right, it's Superman, and well, he can do practically everything. He flies, he can see through things, he can use his laser vision to um, burn stuff up. It's pretty crazy. And he's supposed to be the strongest man in the world. I bet you know this one. That's right, it's Batman. And Batman is a real person, but he has all these gadgets and things that his um, technology people make for him. And he's got a crazy car, but he's a superhero and, and works toward fighting for the low people where things are not being done right. Here's another one. Might not know this one, just the way the picture that I chose. That's Spider-Man. There's a spider, and that's his color of his suit back there. Spider-Man, the story is, got bitten by a spider in a lab, and now he has some crazy spider senses, and he can shoot webs out of his hands. Of course, all of these are fictional. Here's one of my favorites. I don't know if you know this one. Your moms and dads might. That's Wonder Woman's symbol. Now, Wonder Woman, the story is that she was an Amazon woman, and all of the Amazon women were supposed to have just supernatural strength. Well, here's my favorite. My favorite is Captain America. And Captain America, again, the story goes that he was put through some, some tests and some experiments, and he became super strong and the thing that I think that I like the most about Captain America is he just had a lot of good character. I think he acted a lot like Jesus did. So there were lots and lots of abilities that those superheroes have. Um, and they're all considered heroes because of their amazing powers. Now in today's story about Gideon, God chose Gideon to be a hero. But not because he had amazing powers. In fact, you heard the scripture. He was just a plain old ordinary guy. The amazing thing is that he chose to obey God. And by doing that, God was able to use him to save the Israelites once again. So as we continue learning about God's big story in the Bible, we come to this point where Joshua, who had been the leader of the Israelites, had died. And Judges 2-7 tells, tells us that the people served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the elders who outlived him. But unfortunately, their obedience didn't continue. Um, in the next generation, people did evil in the sight of the Lord. They started to worship other gods, and they were given over to their enemies as a result. God raised up judges for the people to help try to keep them in order and to settle disputes, but they were in this constant cycle of obeying and then disobeying. Well, our focus today is on a time when the Israelites were so oppressed by the Midianites they were, they were their major enemies. They couldn't stand it any longer. And they cried out to the Lord for help. God sent them a prophet again to remind them of all of the ways that God had saved them. How did they keep forgetting? I mean, I bet you all remember from the story what God did. He brought them out of slavery in, in Egypt. He helped them win battles and he gave them a new land. He told them to worship him, and that's where they came up short every time. They forgot, or maybe they didn't care. They constantly went back to worshiping the gods of other people. Well, God was about to reveal another plan to forgive and save his people again. So one day he sent this angel, the angel of the Lord, to this man named Gideon. And Gideon was working on threshing wheat when the angel came. Now that means he was separating the bad parts from the good parts that could be eaten. 
And he was doing it in a place where he could hide it from the Midianites. There wasn't really anything special about Gideon. You heard him. He said that. His family was the weakest in their tribe, and Gideon said he was the least important member of his own family. He didn't seem like much of a hero. But God saw him in another way. The angel of the Lord told Gideon that he was strong, and he even called him. Did you remember the words? He called him Mighty Warrior. Well, at first, Gideon had a hard time believing that he was really being chosen to be the hero for the next battle. He asked for a sign. He wanted to make sure that he was listening to an angel of the Lord, that it was really God talking to him through the angel. Um, and you heard it. Got To put it to the test, Gideon got his sacrifice of meat and bread ready and soup. And when he brought it to the angel... The angel gave him some strange instructions. He said, put it on that rock over there and pour the soup over top of the meat and the bread. So Gideon did this, and after obeying, then the angel took the tip of his staff and touched it to the rock onto the food, and fire came out of that rock and burned up the sacrifice. Well, I am sure that Gideon didn't expect that to happen. I think I would be amazed at that, and I think you would be amazed at that. But it did prove to him that God was indeed the one talking to him, and that he was calling him to lead the Israelites in their fight against the Midianites. And Gideon decided to build an altar to God right at that very place. Well, after this... If the story goes on, and, and from that point on, Gideon even asks for a few more signs from God. But God proved himself, of course, to be all-powerful each time. And eventually, Gideon obeyed God. And God helped him lead an army to defeat the Midianites. So, Gideon helped to turn around the consequences of the disobedience of the Israelites. His own obedience helped the Israelites to live in peace for a while. He couldn't travel through time. He couldn't read people's minds. He didn't have superhuman strength. He didn't have spider senses or shoot webs out of his hand. He wasn't the best or the strongest in his own family. So what made God choose Gideon to be a hero? Well, I think God knew Gideon was going to obey. He chose to serve the Lord when many people did not, and that's what made him a hero for the Israelites. So think about yourself for a minute. You're not Captain America. You're not Superman or Wonder Woman or Spider-Man or Batman. We don't have superpowers. We can't shoot webs out of our hands. We can't fly in the air. We can't use our laser vision to burn up things. We can't hold a hammer in our hand like Thor. But we can be a hero when we choose to do the right thing. When we don't obey, we often can feel guilty. I know that I do. <clears throat> and not obeying leads to consequences too, of course. Obedience, obeying God when he tells us to do something, which also means obeying our parents, leads to the chance for God to use us to do great things, <clears throat> just like he used Gideon. So I hope you'll think about that this week when you're asked to do something or you feel that nudge in your heart to go play with somebody you haven't played with before or to be kind to someone. I think that's probably going to be God tapping in your heart and saying, I want you to do this. Go be a superhero for me. Well, that's all I have, folks. I love you so much, and I love spending this time with you. Will you join me in prayer? Dear God, thank you for your word always. Thank you for showing us this story of Gideon and how when we obey, you can use us to do great things. Show us every day how to obey your voice. God, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Boys and girls, always so good to be with you, and I'll see you the next time. I love you.